we looked at what Veronica Mars did. They raised $5.8 million. We said, maybe we could do something like that to jumpstart this process. So we hired the Veronica Mars crowdfunding guru guy, this guy named Ivan, and he, he looked into the internet and found where all our fans were, and he said, this is how we do it. And so we sort of crafted a campaign, and we pressed go. And you know, 54,000 people put up their money, and we, you know, we got 2 million in 24 hours, and 4.6 or 7, and the whole campaign. So it was like, it was this enormous validation, and it showed everybody, hey, the fans are still out there. We read in the New York Times that after 9-11, they reassessed the Canadian-U.S. border and found that some of the markers were not where they thought they'd be. So there was a land swap where the markers were into Canada a little deeper than they thought, and so the U.S. and Canada swapped. It was just a couple of trees and stuff, Yeah, right? they swapped like some little stuff. chunks of land, and then they, they, or, they organized what the real border was. We thought it'd be funny if an entire town of Canada was actually in the U.S. soil and that we would then be the occupying force to come see the oversee the transfer of power from the Canadians to the U.S. And these and people were not Canadians happy. have to become Americans and learn the Pledge of Allegiance and get U.S. passports. And not happy about it. Uh, 6 a.m., calisthenics, <laughs> uh, um, yeah. do a little jog, light jog. Egg yolks for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Drinking. Sort of stretching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 90 minutes of, of us catching up and then like 20 minutes of work, and, and then, then a half an hour of screwing Sports off. talk, right. get some food. And then 20 minutes of work. And then the, like a laptop open, somebody's like, check this out, <laughs> this thing's going viral. <laughs> Cat videos. We write an outline, then we revise the outline several times until it's really organized. And then we split up the outline into five pieces. Everybody writes 20 pages. He writes 35. <laughs> and then we revise. What? Well, and then we revise like the well, first first three drafts. We'll just revise our pages, and then we'll give it to a point man, and then they'll, they'll take it the next thirty four drafts. Yeah, he was just going to get the guy who was on his right. He was, That's right. He was, was, he? was, was he? Was he now? Was he now? Was he? But no, I think actually we we <laughs> we took the structure of the story and the narrative more seriously this time. I think a lot of times in the first one, narrative follows a, a, a bit or a sketch, or, you know. Whereas in this case, we really wanted to, before we even wrote like jokes or comic set pieces, it's like, let's tell a story that is actually like really intriguing and has sort of interesting turns and is compelling. So I think in this case, much more so than the first one, we created that outline, beaded it out, uh, uh, you know, slugged in the kind of the, the story beats and then filled in the jokes. Yeah, that for, like Super Troopers 1, I remember it was like a, like a packet of like 12 or 15 just scenes, individual scenes. Sketches almost. Yeah, and out of, out of that we selected, there was the one of pulling over stoners. We were like, this one is the best way to, op to meet our characters. You know, you're in the, the perspective of the stoners. It's the only time you'll ever get to be pulled over, experience a pullover from these characters before you know that they're the heroes of the movie. And this is a great way to sort of get everybody's personality out there and introduce these guys. Even in this film, we, you know, we tried to make the mustaches double the size because, you know, it's a sequel. You want to go big a little bit. No, and I, I didn't have a mustache in the right. first one. So right. I so went. Definitely double the so size. To me, there's a classic case of sequelitis, yeah. which is more, mo mustache. Yeah, right. mustache. And we have 20% more yeah. mustache. So in three, then, We'll all have mustaches, right? Then he'll have no, a mustache. No, he's still. Am I allowed to grow one? No, he's Maybe not. Maybe a third. I can they'll, they'll, they won't get a unibrow. They haven't earned it yet. Just a unibrow. <laughs> but even Kevin's mustache, you know, like Kevin, when we filmed Super Troopers the first, he had only 12 hair holes in his in his upper lip. Right, right. But in, in the sequel, sense. he's got 24 hair holes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Double the pleasure, bro. Mm. Enormously nervous. Very nervous. I yeah, mean, it, no it, it was going to be the end of our uh, Super Troopers if if nobody jumped it. Yeah, like, and you're I think just staring at a blank screen, right? You have no like idea. Telephone. Yeah, it's like a telephone or presidential campaign. It was. It, I mean, it spun out of control because like we were on Reddit and we were going to answer everybody's question on Reddit that we could, and, and it was like there were hundreds of questions that were flying at us, and we're all in the room like furiously typing these things away, and the ticker's going on behind us, and it was pretty frenetic. Over the years, Super Troopers has become such a like beloved movie from the fans, and I think those guys feel it in their in their everyday lives. You know, like Cox you know, told us how often he gets recognized for Super Troopers, you know. Uh, of all the things that he's done, he gets recognized the most for Super Troopers. And so I think when it came down to it, those guys, you know, were happy to do it. And, and you know, we moved our schedule around a little bit to fit Brian, and Brian moved his around a little bit to us. And, and then Linda was happy to come in and, and gaff again. I mean, all these guys, you call them up, and they're like, yeah, we'd love to come do it. So it wasn't, it wasn't a difficult thing at all. The gaff again one is, is to me, the funniest because when we made the first one, he was a commercial actor and a small stand-up comedian who auditioned for the movie. And in this 
uh, time around, he flew on his private jet. Like we had to offer him the role. <laughs> he had to read it, consider it, accept, and then he flew himself out private jet for six hours, shot a scene, and, and went he, off to the Wilbur Theater. Yeah, he only had like two hours, right? So he had to like fly in, <laughs> shoot, fly out. I worked with Rob on his show, The Grinder, with Fred Savage, and uh, we did four episodes. And afterwards, I said, "Hey." Any chance you would consider being in Super Troopers 2? And he said, anything, I'll do anything. I don't even need to see the script. And Fred was sitting there and he goes, what about me? And so we put him in too. <laughs> but you know, that character you know, is this, we, you needed a guy who's incredibly charismatic, who looks like he would be the, you know, the, the mayor of this French Canadian town, but he had to be a hockey player who so wanted like a toughness too. So you know, but you, and you needed a guy who could really carry comedy and, and very quickly, we were like, "Oh man, Rob Lowe." And do the X checks off all of those, yeah. Yeah, all of those those boxes. We remember Rob from like Young Blood, right, playing hockey player, but then he's also in these I iconic comedies: Wayne's World, Austin Powers, uh, Tommy Boy. He's been in these great comedies, so it was a perfect for, perfect match for us. But like we have, we have these scenes with like we've got the bear, and you've got Rob Lowe. And like you do the scene with the bear, and you're like, "Okay, that was terrifying." Then you do the scene with Rob Lowe, but you come out of that one trembling because you're like, "Oh my God, he's so good looking." So good. Ryan Cox told me, he said, the way to act and direct, uh, he told me that in the first film, is, is to bracket your performance. So you just, you give a subtle read of the line, a little bigger, write what you think it should be, over the top, and then way over the top, and then one of those five will be good. We, we really did try to make, you know, in the same way Law & Order made 20, 250 episodes of their show, we just tried to make another story with these cops. And once we had a good story and we had, you know, we had a whole movie, we kind of went back and painted in little references to the first movie so that they felt they were fitting this new story rather than they were driving the, the, the scenes. I love when Farva met his French-Canadian counterpart. There's a lot of, like, they'd make up lines and the seeing of each other. I know that re instant recognition for me, I, just, that was, I could watch that all day long. There's a bunch of different takes afterwards, and I had to prevent myself from laughing as it was being shot. <laughs> I love shooting what will hopefully be known as the Danny DeVito scene. <laughs> uh, I, no I, <laughs> I will never forget uh, going mouth to mouth with Farva. Mm. I don't know if that was my favorite day, but I'll never forget it. <laughs> my favorite day. Mm. That was a good day. For me, it was watching Captain John O'Hagan performing karaoke. Fantastic. <laughs> it's just to me, it's the, like, I, I think it was kind of a late thing where the idea is we, would just, we went to the restaurant and he was waiting there. And I think he was like, give me something interesting to be doing at this place. And we're like, <laughs> right. all right, buddy, you want to do something interesting to sing karaoke? And it's, to me, just the idea of watching this police chief in uniform <laughs> singing karaoke <laughs> at, a, at, a, at a restaurant. <laughs> it's it's fantastic. In uniform. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, God, I, you know, I, I was thinking about, because I was looking the other day, that uh, watching that construction scene in the opening of the thing, bring back good memories because it was the first scene that we shot. The first, first scene that we shot when we got back there and had the money and were ready to go. And it was like, oh, we're gonna finish this movie. And I, I always remember being on that set on that construction scene. It was, yeah, fun. Time I enjoyed standing opposite you while you went on a riff about uh, eating turtle and how the <laughs> shell is the saltiest Salty part. Salty fish. <laughs> right. I need something to jerk off your blood pressure. Harder. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this guy talking about. Yeah. Uh, Insanity. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!